this is happier, happier. Um, my good friend, uh, Shelly Zimmerman, who is a Lucille Ball aficionado like me, did a posting today on Facebook where she was talking about how uh, John Ritter made Lucille Ball break up on camera when she was filming her very last series, Life with Lucy. That's the sitcom. They filmed 13 episodes, but it got canceled after only eight. It was supposed to have been her triumphant return to television. And, uh, oh, no, Debbie said more like a bypass. No, uh, at the time, it was reported a partial heart transplant. And uh, I haven't heard anything to the contrary to that. But um, anyway, uh, she was uh, talking about that, how John Ritter made her break up on camera. And Lucy claimed that it had only happened three times before, citing um, the I Love Lucy episode, Break the Lease. You know, the one where... Uh, Lucy and Ricky are trying to get out of their lease with Fred and Ethel by becoming the neighbors from hell, like pounding their feet on the ceiling, taking a trash can lid and taking a jackhammer to it on the floor. Uh, finally, uh, Ricky brings his band, his entire orchestra to the apartment to rehearse and play at top volume at 430 in the morning, causing the plaster to cave in on the merches down below and they show up with a chandelier on top of their heads. And if you watch it carefully, you will see Lucy fighting not to break out laughing. You can, you can see her biting her cheeks. And uh, there was an episode of Van Johnson. Uh, that Shelly mentioned it. I've got to look it up, but uh, she supposedly broke up there. And there was also an episode of Here's Lucy, uh, Gail Gordon, was being this woman was hitting him with a purse <laughs> repeatedly and gail ad-libbed the line well i'm glad she didn't have doorknobs in there and lucy for some reason thought that was really really funny and she could not stop laughing but she was such a good actress she was able to fake it enough to make it look like her character was laughing at the situation. But anyway, the reason I'm making such a big deal out of this and bringing it up is because I was there. I was there when John Ritter made Lucille Ball break up on camera. So I thought, well, this is perfect. This is going to be my story for today. I never have told the story of my one time seeing Lucille Ball in person, my idol, the time she and I breathed the same air in the room under the same roof. And it was uh, her, of course, her sitcom, Life with Lucy. I had just moved out here. You know, it was like May of 86. I'd been here, what, about was it about nine, about 10 months or so? And it was announced in the newspaper that Lucille Ball was returning to television with a new series. I'm like, hooray, hooray. I was like jumping up and down. I was so excited. I was so excited. And then it occurred to me, oh, wait a minute. I live here in LA. I live here. I can get tickets. I can go see Lucy. I can go see Lucy in person. <laughs> So I kept watching and watching and watching. When does it start filming? When does it start production? Uh, then I found out late July, early August, they had started filming. So I just used every connection I had, anybody I knew who could secure tickets. And of course, I found out it's not that hard to get tickets to the filming or taping of a show here in LA. The hard part is getting in because they always give a lot more tickets than they have available seats because they want to ensure a full, uh, I wouldn't say theater, whatever you want to call it, the, the bleachers and the sound stage. They want to ensure they have a full crowd. So there was no guarantee at all that I was going to get in. But I did get a ticket and I left work early that day telling people I was going to go see Lucy. And I got in the line. It was, um, let's see, near Formosa. I'm trying to think of the street, but it was near 
Formosa Street in Hollywood, the the studio where they were going to film this. And it was the former Sam Goldwyn Studios. And what's interesting about that is that's where Lucille Ball, 22-year-old Lucille Ball, well, she wasn't quite 22. She was like a two weeks shy. But um, yes, the calls are still coming in. Ding, ding, ding. Sorry about that. Um, not quite 22-year-old Lucille Ball came to Hollywood to be a chorus girl, one of the 12 Goldwyn girls. I've told this story before on this live stream of one of the 12 chorus girls for an Eddie Cantor musical called Roman Scandals. And it was filmed at this very lot. I tried to confirm if it was the same soundstage. And I've talked to a lot of knowledgeable people and I've done internet searches. Nobody seems to be able to um, tell me, tell me if this was the actual soundstage. I even know a good friend of Lucille Ball's who uh, worked as her assistant. He was there for all the shows. And I, I called him up and I said, was that the soundstage where she made go, um, uh, Roman Scandals? I said, I don't know. I said, Lucy, her, she even gave me a tour of the lot and pointed out all the things and all. And he said, I don't recall her mentioning anything about which soundstage the movie was done on. I thought, well, that's a shame. But anyway, that's where Lucille Ball was doing her, um, her final sitcom. She took her career full circle. That was where it began. And sadly, that's where it ended. Now, that's another story. I mean, I realized Lucille Ball, of course, did like some game show appearances. And I think she did a little bit on a Bob Hope special, some things like that. But basically, that's where her acting career ended. It began and ended right there on that lot. So anyway, that's where they were filming uh, Life with Lucy. And I see Debbie said she was diagnosed with a dissecting aortic aneurysm and underwent a seven hour surgery to repair her aorta and successfully install an aortic valve replacement. That must be why the press at the time called it a partial heart transplant. That must be where that comes from. And of course, we know that Lucy died of a ruptured aorta. So, you know, it was her time. It, uh, but uh, I understand the doctors fought valiantly to save her life. I mean, they knew this was like the most loved woman on the planet earth and they had to just do anything to save her. I've even read that maybe someone else, they would not have taken such, shall we say heroic means such as doing a partial transplant and things to, on a 77 year old woman to try to save her life. But it was, it was Lucy. So anyway, uh, getting back, this was where she was doing her uh, final sitcom, and I got in a very, very long line on the sidewalk. And this was, I'm trying to remember, this may have been an hour and a half, two hours before they were even going to start uh, letting people in. And even then, it was questionable if I was going to get in. And uh, yes, I'm going to admit, I was like, please, God, please, God, please let me in. Please, I promise I'll be good. You know, those things where we plea bargain with God. I was, yes, I was saying a little prayers to myself. And I remember standing in that line like it was yesterday. And I remember just almost like trembling, shaking like a leaf, like, oh my God. Because I've been a fan of Lucille Ball since I was two years old. And I had been waiting for this for a long, long time. You know, and I, anyway, I made the cut. They let me in. So I get in. They let us onto the soundstage. And I see all the audience bleachers. I had only been out here a few months. So I had never attended a filming or a taping before. This was a whole new experience for me. So there I come in. I, you know, I knew it was going to be this way, but I saw all, you know, they do the sets side by side for a sitcom done before an audience. In this case, there were three sets. There was the hardware store where she and Gail Gordon, their characters work, they owned a business. And then the center part was the living room of the house where they lived in. 
the third part, they had uh, uh, these makeshift curtains covering it because they wanted to surprise the audience for what was coming up at the end. So that's all we got to see. So I get in there and I looked at my watch and I thought, you know, there's still like an hour to go. <laughs> so they just wanted to make sure everybody was seated and in their places. And I'm sitting there and I couldn't help myself. I was just like, uh, like I said, I often have felt like a little boy in a candy store when I'm in LA. And this was like the ultimate candy store. I was like, they're just sitting there shaking and trembling like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I'm like, I see Lucy. I'm going to see Lucy. I'm going to see her work. And uh, I thought, what an honor this is. I'm going to get to watch her work. I'm going to get to watch her act. I'm going to get to watch her in front of the cameras. And um, after a long, long wait, her husband, Gary Morton, came out to do the audience warm up. And any of you who have ever gone to a filming or a taping of a show will know uh, this is where you earn your ticket. <laughs> they make you work. They want to get you all worked up. They want you laughing. They want you prepared to do your job. And our job in the audience is to provide the, the laughter and the applause and the reactions. So that was Gary Morton's job. Gary Morton. Her husband used to be a stand-up comic in the Catskills when he met Lucy back in 1961, I think it was. It was when she was on Broadway doing the musical Wildcat. He claimed to the press that he had never watched I Love Lucy. He claimed that because he was always doing stand-up gigs at night and never had time for that and claimed he hardly knew who Lucille Ball was. Yeah, right. But anyway, that's the story he always gave. Uh, of course, Lucy always gave the story that he was only six years younger than her. Turns out, after his death, it was revealed he was 15 years younger than her. Lucy was quite the cougar. Good for you, Lucy. But anyway, Gary Morton uh, came out, did the audience warm up. And he did a few introductions, uh, but the one that I remember was Mary Wicks. And if you know who that is, she was a wonderful character actress who was on all of Lucille Ball's shows, except for the last one. The show ended too soon, but she was on I Love Lucy, very famously, as the ballet instructor. Remember the one where Lucy had to lift her leg up to the bar, and there's the ballet teacher going, Abba! Abba, Abba, with a stick in her hand. Madame Ricardo, you have great talent. That was Mary Wicks. And she worked a lot on the Lucy show. Here's Lucy. She was in the audience and uh, she stood up to take a bow. Now, this is what Gary Morton said. He claimed that Mary Wicks never missed a filming of any of Lucille Ball's shows. Now, I have later talked to some other people who are Lucy aficionados who know their stuff and say, oh, no, that's not true. She wasn't there for everyone. So, but I would say it's safe to say she made quite a few. And certainly she was a very dear friend of Lucy. So she was there in the audience. And uh, let's see, Gary said, well, he introduced the, the cast members one by one. And, of course, brought out Gail Gordon, last the great Gail Gordon. You know, he'd been Mr. Mooney, Uncle Harry. He even did some um, I Love Lucy's, uh, Mr. Littlefield, the owner of the Tropicana nightclub. And many don't know this, but Lucio Ball, almost her entire broadcast history, going back to the early days of radio, included Gail Gordon. Her first radio show, it was called The Wonder Show with uh, Jack Haley, who played the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. Uh, he had a half hour comedy variety radio show weekly, and Lucille Ball was a regular on there. Gail Gordon was the announcer on the show. So they, even as early as 1938, Lucy and Gail were working together. Flash forward 10 years when Lucy was doing her series, My Favorite Husband, which was the radio series that became the basis for I Love Lucy. Gail Gordon was 
one of the regular cast members of the show. Uh, so they, their history went way, way back. And here it was all these years later, something like 48 years later, still working together. And Gail Gordon is brought out to a, we just all gave him a big standing ovation. And he was 80 years old at the time, still had so much energy and vitality. And he was just so happy to be there. I could see he just was thrilled to be working again and be working with Lucy. And um, Ruth Buzzy had a small part. He, uh, Gary Morton introduced her, brought her out. I thought it was intriguing because she had actually been a guest star on Here's Lucy many years earlier. And now she was playing just a little tiny bit. But I guess she was just so excited to be working with Lucy that she was going to take anything she could get. And then, and i got to remember this, I think Gary said we have a very special guest star tonight, Mr. John Ritter. No, oh my God, everyone went crazy. And I thought, oh my God, John Ritter and Lucy? Yes, but he said, we're not gonna bring him out right now. We, and he said, and Lucy's not gonna come out now because we want you to welcome her when she's on camera, which is basically a cue for everybody to just go crazy you know, when she came out. So there was all of this anticipation and uh, oh yes, the other thing Gary said to us, now this show is done on film and not tape, so we don't have monitors. I apologize, you can't watch on the monitors, but hopefully you can see everything going on. Enjoy the show. So the lights came down, <laughs> lights came up on the set. I'm like, <laughs> literally, I'm just so, so excited. And the director calls for action. They have the clapboard. And in walks Lucy. And the audience, shall I just say it, went apeshit. The audience, ah! I mean, just cheering. It was thunderous. People were stamping their feet and just the applause went on and on and on. And Lucy was doing this little bit. She walks in and she picked up a spatula off the counter and she was fixing her hair like if she was looking in a mirror and she melted a little bit. I think they had to edit it down a little in the final print of the show, but uh, it was quite, quite something uh, when she walked out there and she did some banter with Gail Gordon and the, we, the audience, we were just, we were so thrilled that we, the, the laughter just was enormous and every there was applause after her lines. And um, I later realized when I watched the show, this was not doing the show or Lucy a favor because it worked if you were watching it like a stage play. You know, if you know theater is big, it's over the top. Uh, our reactions from the audience were big and over the top. And it felt fine when we were watching it. But when I watched it on television, it just seemed so out of proportion. It was too much to the point where it looked like it was like artificial canned laughter and canned applause. And it felt really forced and fake. But I was there. I can tell you, it was real. They did not fake any of the laughs. It was all real. And I watched that episode now. And I know my laughter is part of that laughter there. So anyway, she did some banter with Gail Gordon and then it's in the hardware store. In comes John Ritter. I, I think he was looking for a doorknob or something. It was something like a door handle, doorknob or something. And I, of course the audience went crazy again, <laughs> you know, and the applause and the cheering and everything. And I thought, my God, it's it's the old guard and the young guard together, you know, because John Ritter in many ways was like the young male Lucille Ball of his time. So it was really exciting to see them work together, to see their chemistry. And Lucy, at the age of 75, was still doing comedy, physical comedy. She was climbing up and down ladders and just jumping around and with this energy. I, I think it just gave Lucy such joy to be back in front of an audience in front of the cameras that 30 years disappeared off of her. She was she was a young woman. <laughs> I was thinking of that line of Shelley Winters in the Poseidon Adventure. In the water, I'm a very skinny woman. Well, Lucy on a soundstage in front of an audience, she was in her arena. She was where she was supposed to be. So it was just 
it went really well. I got, you know, they filmed it all in one continuous take. I must have been like a 10 minute sequence. And that's very true to form to the way Lucille Ball worked. Going back to I Love Lucy, um, sometimes sitcoms can go on for like five, six hours or well into the night doing retake after retake. Lucy was always very budget conscious and she was very much about rehearsing it till it was perfect and it was on its feet and they could just film it straight through in one take. They rarely, rarely did retakes, which comes to what I'm getting to here. Um, it was uh, because they were doing all this physical shtick in the hardware store, John Ritter, his character, he was playing himself, but John Ritter playing the character John Ritter got injured and Lucy's, oh, come home with me, Mr. Ritter, and I'll get you all bandaged up and fixed up and everything. And <laughs> so they do more physical shtick where she brings him a lunch. And I'm trying to remember, for some reason, he didn't want to eat it. It was some kind of health food conco concoction. So Lucy was force feeding him. And something happened that made Lucy break up laughing. So this is coming back full circle to what I was talking about at the beginning of the show. Hence, the fourth time Lucy ever broke up in front of an audience, and I was there to see it. She broke up laughing. The scene was, they thought, ruined, which woo, pissed off Lucy. Woo, I could just see she was not happy about that and a little mad at herself for breaking up. And uh, the director came onto the set and there were two or three other cr crew members and we couldn't hear what they were saying, but they were bantering away, having a big discussion over whether they could salvage the scene or not. If they had to retake it. They obviously decided not to retake the scene. And at that point, Lucy, the only time she broke the fourth wall and turned to the audience, she turned to us and said, I want you to know that only three times before has someone ever made me do that, break up laughing. And she said it almost seriously. <laughs> so I thought, oh, wow, I feel privileged. I got to witness that. And of course, the, the third set, they pulled the curtain and there was this thing where John Ritter was doing a play at the Pasadena Playhouse. And guess what? The leading lady was ill and could not go on. And the director comes up to John Ritter and says, <clears throat> Well, I'm wondering who we can get to take her place. And of course, the studio audience was like, oh, because <laughs> we all knew. We all knew. How many times was that premise used on a Lucy show? <laughs> and Lucy's like, oh, Mr. Ritter. <laughs> and of course, they do this wonderful bit where they're doing this schlocky play on stage and Lucy is sabotaging it and everything goes wrong and it's hysterical. And then John Ritter swallows a harmonica and she pokes his chest and little musical notes come out of his mouth. Anyway, that was my experience seeing Lucille Ball in person, watching a filming of the show. Oh yes, I did shake hands with Gary Morton during a break in filming. And I asked him, well, is Lucy going to come out? Is she going to talk to us? Is she going to sign autographs? And he said, no, no, give us your address. We'll send you a picture. So anyway, that was as close as I ever came to seeing Lucille Ball in person. 